Question, is it possible that Gareth Bale could wind up being the Russell Westbrook of LAFC? What is it about USC football that makes college football bloggers sound like they're writing for Gilmore Girls? And what does the Bible of the NHL think of the LA Kings offseason? Good morning, I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is Faithful Angelinos. It's July 18th, 2022. I want to start off by thanking all the new subscribers that joined within the last 24 hours. I am extremely confident the vast majority of you are LA Galaxy supporters. I see you. I appreciate you. Thanks for getting in on the ground floor. If you like the content we've been putting out for the last five months on LA Sports, quickly clack the like button. Quickly clack the subscribe button. There's a notifications bell. Hit that. It'll let you know when we come out with new videos. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist. And yes, comment. Because I sure as hell ain't doing this for fame or fortune. Now, before we get to the news and notes from around LA sports, let's take a quick look at the scoreboard. There was only one game for LA teams yesterday. Giorgio Chiellini and Gareth De Bale debuted for LAFC, but Christian Arango and Jose Cifuente steal the show. They each score a goal. LAFC 2, uh, Nashville 1. There are no games scheduled for LA teams today because after all, it's the all-star break in baseball. Now, LAFC added two European legends to the roster over the last month. One of them was Giorgio Chiellini, a defenseman made a name for himself with powerhouse team Juventus. He comes over and honestly, he played 60 minutes and did just fine. It's true Nashville did score while he was on the pitch, but that was on a penalty kick. The foul that was created in the penalty area was not by Chiellini. Chiellini had nothing to do with it. But I am curious about Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale, who played for Tottenham Hotspur, Real Madrid, came over with a lot of hoopla as if he was going to be to LA to see what Zlatan was to the Galaxy. He didn't look all that good. Now look, part of the reason is obviously going to be fitness. The man hasn't played in a while. We totally want to get that. So I don't want to overstate this and make this a hot take where everybody comes back a couple of months later and tells me I'm full of crap. I get it. But I do have a question. It's just a question. Is he going to be like Russell Westbrook for the Lakers? What do I mean by that? Carlos Vela and Gareth Bale are technically playing the nine position the forward that gets the primary shots in the middle, for those of you who don't follow soccer as much. When Bale and Vela were on the pitch, it seemed to me that the black and gold's offense slowed down, like they didn't know how to figure things out. And that's because you could argue that you have two people basically fighting for the ball in the same area. Is that not the same problem in a sense that what happened with the Lakers last year? Russell Westbrook and LeBron James both wanting the ball. Russell Westbrook and LeBron James both trying to run the pick and run offense. Didn't that ground the Lakers offense to a screeching halt last year? And if so, does that mean the same potentially for LAFC? Now, I'm not saying I know that I'm right. A couple of weeks later, we can come back. Gareth Bale has scored like nine times and Bella has scored seven and we all move on with our lives. But I'm not sure that was a really great start for this upgraded LAFC roster. Looked like a log jam to me. I'm starting to believe that people who blog about college football ovulate. It's bananas. I keep reading about these people bitching about USC, right? A couple, about a week or so ago, there was some jackhole over in Pittsburgh who quoted somebody in Texas claiming that USC's wide receiver, Jordan Addison, was pissed that he went to USC. Now, we all debunked that last week, okay? 
a Pittsburgh media outlet reporting on somebody in Texas, talking about somebody in California, stop it. There is no link. It literally sounded like, oh, and then Milo went to Emily. And then he said to Emily that he doesn't want to be with Madison anymore. That's all, it's all BS. It's, it's high school gossip. It's so, football is a game where you have to be a tough guy to play it. That is not tough guy talk. That is the stuff that you hear when you get a Manny Petty. Not that I would know, right? <laughs> That's the type of stuff you hear in a mall when you're 14. And so anyway, there's this doof named Mike Farrell. By the way, Mike Farrell, loved you and MASH, but in college football, not too bright. Uh, he claims that Caleb Williams left Oklahoma to play quarterback at SC because Sooner fans are horrible people. Now, I wanted to give Mike Farrell the benefit of the doubt because after all, what a character B.J. Honeycutt was in the 1980s, right? There is no quote from any media source that I saw from either Caleb Williams or Caleb Williams relatives that said he hated being in Oklahoma and hated the Sooners fans. There's none. And that is what my, this Mike Farrell guy, he said, oh, he claimed he said it to the, the LA Times. He links to a story in the LA Times. There's no quote saying he hated being with the Sooners. Nothing. It's crap. Now, what did happen was that Caleb Williams was not happy with the reaction from Sooner fans when he said he was going to enter the transfer portal. The Sooner fans got a little whatever then. He said he didn't like the reaction. But that doesn't mean he left because of Sooner fans. There's a big, big difference. It's not semantics. I just can't stand it when people try to make stuff up just to create clickbait. <sighs> Meanwhile, by the way, I will say this. Caleb Williams does want different jerseys for USC. Look, no thank you. I like USC's jerseys the way they are. There's no need to change it. They're iconic. By the way, sad story also talking about USC, about former Heisman Trophy winner Charles White. The guy won a national championship as a running back back when USC was tailback tech. I was a little kid, I'm watching these replays of USC football games. Charles White was the tailback and Marcus Allen was the fullback. How's that for a back deal? Running out of the eye formation. And then Charles White goes to the NFL. Unfortunately, he gets caught up uh, with some substance abuse. But at the same time, after he got clean, he winds up joining the LA Rams, led the NFL in rushing that year. So this guy was a really quality back. He was quality. Unfortunately, he's been diagnosed with dementia and now he lives in assisted living out in Orange County. Now, Bill Plaschke of the LA Times caught up with him and it's a sad story. And Bill Plaschke really knows how to, you know, play the violin for people to try and get you to feel all emo about these sort of things. It's emotional on its own. Getting diagnosed with dementia is just not cool. It's just, mm, it's an awful thing. But what Plasky tried to do was he tried to build a case that Charles White got dementia as a result from all the hits that he took as a football player. Is it possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. No question it's possible. But it's not a fait accompli. It's not automatic. Remember, White, unfortunately, became addicted as a young man to both drugs and alcohol, which in fact does lead to dementia as well. So we can talk about whether it's getting hit in the head being a football player or whether it's, uh, whether it's addiction. It's all unfortunate. I like Charles White. I do. But I don't want to draw conclusions. I'm no more, I'm, I am more of a medical professional than Bill Plasky is. And that tells me not to draw conclusions. Side note, uh, since we mentioned it's the All-Star break, Freddie Freeman is snubbed no more. He was added to the National League All-Star team last night. Six Dodgers will be uh, participating tomorrow. 
Freeman has had a terrific year, obviously, number four in hitting with an average of 321, and he leads the major leagues with 114 base hits in 90 games. He's having a terrific year for your boys in blue. By the way, the Dodgers, the uh, major league draft started yesterday. They wound up picking at 40. They drafted Louisville catcher Dalton Rushing, and I'd be lying if I said that I knew anything about the guy because I totally don't. So the hockey news, which is the Bible for professional hockey, pretty much loves the future for the LA Kings, just to get that out of the way, except for their goaltending situation, which is a fair assessment. They are not saying that the Kings right now are cup contenders, but they are saying that the future is not, the future is now for the LA Kings is the upshot. They're not building for a future, they're building for the here and now. They are saying the Kings could be the second best team in the Pacific Division and should be able to advance out of the first round of the NHL playoffs since they won the Stanley Cup back in 2014. LA has an outstanding top line, some of this stuff you already know, because they traded for Kevin Fiala from the Minnesota Wild. Fiala will probably be on the top, top, top line as a wing, Adrian Kempe at the other wing, centered by Andre Kopitar. That is gonna be some good times if you're a Kings fan, as I am, obviously. The hope for the Kings is that Drew Doughty returns, not just returns on the ice, but returns to form, where he would instantly boost the surprisingly young defenseman that the Kings brought out last year when Doughty got hurt. The prayer for the Kings is for Jonathan Quick to retain his level of play from last year and stay healthy. Because if he gets hurt, all bets are off. Because they don't have enough uh, backup goaltending to absolutely say they're still gonna be fine. They don't. But the other reason to like the LA Kings, not only to reach the playoffs this year, but to possibly advance, Vegas has lost four players from their roster, four quality players. And they lost them to free agency. That was the result of a trade they made last year. They went all in. They made a trade for Jack Eichel. It blew up in their face, and now they're paying the repercussions for it. Also, division winner Calgary has lost Johnny Hockey, Johnny Goudreau. He winds up signing with the Columbus Blue Jackets. So the division champions are weaker. The Vegas Golden Knights are weaker. The Kings, who are in third place, have a shot to move up. So, yes... We're talking about teams where the future is bright. The LA Kings, USC Trojans, we have to take a wait and see approach to see what's going on with LAFC. And of course, the all-star game at gorgeous Chavez Ravine tomorrow. So even though it's not as hardcore of a news week, it's still a good week for LA sports. Now, if you enjoyed today's broadcast, don't forget to like and subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We are trying to build something here for LA sports. I'm James. Thank you very much for watching. Faithful Angelinos is a Guillen Corta El Queso production. Have a great day.